Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. Each year we hold back hundreds and sometimes even thousands of animals to become future breeders. In this week's episode, I want to show you just a handful of my favorites from 2012. You're watching Snake Bites. When keeping a large collection of snakes like we do, each year I have to not only continue to manage what I have, but think what would be good for the future when raising up. Sometimes it's just a matter of replacing older animals, and sometimes it's a matter of enhancing the groups I have, and even sometimes starting brand new projects that are available. Take for instance this albino rosy boas. Now I've worked with rosy boas in the past, but I've always really enjoyed the albinos, so we finally got a handful of albino rosy boas to add to our growing group. You guys know how much I love corn snakes, and I really love the sunkiss mutation in particular. So we've added a few new sunkiss mutations this year, and I think that these ultra sunkiss happen to be my favorite. I mean, they're just really cool because you're mixing an ultra gene, which is kind of a co-dominant animal when it comes to albinism, and then the sunkiss gene. And you can see this guy's a little feisty one too. Another sunkiss mutation that we added this year that I was really happy with the way they turned out were these albino sunkiss. Now there's already albino reverse okatees and sunkiss are an okatee animal so you already knew they were going to be really cool but man the albinos came out way neater than I thought they would. I can't wait till these guys get a year or two old and the color really pops. The ultra gene is a really cool gene because it really brightens things up and this ultra diffused animal really came out neat. Again I hadn't seen any larger ultra diffuse so I'm not really sure what it's going to look like but judging by how it looks as a baby it's going to be breathtaking. What's Chewy's favorite adult beverage? Is it A. Bacardi and Diet Coke, B. Corona, or C. Jack Daniels on the Rocks? Answer with a comment and keep watching to see if you're right. Tessera corns are really the first true co-dominant animal when it comes to corn snakes. It's actually a pattern mutation and as you can see it's just really striped and the side patterns all marbled out. They're really beautiful animals. And this year we were able to get some albinos and they're definitely going to be holdbacks. We also did a few other mutations like anneries that came out really cool as well. As a matter of fact this may be my favorite mutation, the annery tesseras. Again we're hanging out to a whole bunch of these guys. It's going to be cool to see what we can do in the future. Terrazzo corns are another mutation of corn snake that we're holding a bunch back because I really like them. As you can see, it's another color and pattern mutation with the striping, but unlike the Tesseras, they're actually a recessive mutation. We've already bred them into a bunch of different color paint jobs, so we're hoping to get some really cool Terrazzo stuff in the next couple years. Probably one of my favorite new mutations that we're working with in corn snakes is the lava gene. Now it's a recessive gene that's kind of hypomelanistic, which is lacking in black pigment, but also adds a lot of iridophore, which is the red pigment. So as you can see, this guy is just really nice bright red, and as they get bigger, wow, do they extremely pop. And when you get them into other mutations, it makes incredible stuff. So we're holding on to a bunch of lava stuff. Let's go upstairs and look at some of the holdbacks up there, but wait a second guys, I gotta show you this. To be honest, these aren't holdbacks because they're already adults, but it is a new project I started working with that I absolutely love. These are actually Savu pythons, and they just are super, super cool. You can see the really bright eyes, and they're really beautiful when they hatch as babies. They're bright red, amazing animals, and this is an adult. As a matter of fact, we already have some eggs cooking from this project. so. Although this isn't a new project as far as baby goes holdback wise, I had to show them because we're walking by them. Let's go upstairs, guys. There's a lot of really cool snakes up here, but I'm going to just show you a handful of them as quickly as I possibly can. I produced one of these last year, and I tell you what, it's growing up to be so cool. So I was super excited to produce a couple more of these. These are albino chocolate emery rat snakes. So again, it's cool when you mix the chocolate gene, which has a lot of melanin, and then the albinism gene, it kind of makes this really bright orange animal with little green dots on them, which is kind of interesting. But I tell you another animal that was really cool that I haven't produced a lot of really nice ones in the last few years, but this year I hit some really good ones and we're hanging on to a bunch of them because we really want to grow that colony are these orange theri. I tell you what, you don't see nearly as many theri as you used to and these orange ones are beautiful and they grow up and they get even better. So I can't wait to produce a whole bunch more of these and have them available.
I've always been a big fan of the Chinese and Taiwan beauties. I think it's because they're a rat snake that get really big, with the Chinese getting up to six foot, and believe it or not, the Taiwan's getting eight or nine foot, and they're always just full of energy. So when we produced these albino Chinese beauties this year, I was absolutely blown away. Just look at how vivid the color is and bright, and with that purple pattern coming through, they're really amazing animals. So of course, I had to hold on to a whole bunch of these guys, because I think they're gonna be a big part of the future hobby. You guys ready to go look at some ball pythons? Let's go do this. Each year I always hang on to a whole bunch of ball pythons for my future project. The truth is, I don't really want to sell any of my ball pythons because I want to keep them all, but there's always a handful that I'm really excited about. I'm going to show you a few of them right now. This fire pin pied probably is one of my favorite snakes that I produced this year. I really love pinstripes and I love pie balls, and when you add the fire gene to it, Holy cow, does it pop. It's hard to believe that this guy's only about three months old. Look at how vivid the color is. It just gets better with age. I really like the Red Stripe Project. It's a co-dominant mutation in ball pythons. And this year, we are lucky enough to produce this Red Stripe Yellow Belly. And with all the cool stuff going on in the Yellow Belly Complex, adding the Red Stripe co-dominant gene is gonna make for a really cool future project. With all the awesome clown mutations out there, we were super stoked to produce this Killer Blast Het Clown male. That means we can take this animal to all our clown females and produce some really cool combinations. Again, this is a super pastel pinstripe spider, so you can only imagine what's going to happen when we breed him to all our clown females. The chocolate complex is a co-dominant mutation of a kind of dark earth tone animal. We've been working on it for a long time and when we finally hit a killer bee chocolate, we're really excited because again, we can get this into all kinds of other mutations and the super pastel is gonna really help produce some awesome animals. In my opinion, this might be the prettiest snake that we produced this year. This is a Fire Super Blast Spectre. That's right, it's actually a Fire Super Pastel Pinstripe and has the Spectre gene. You can only imagine the Super Stripe stuff we're going to be able to produce out of this girl in the next few years. I've been working on this project for the last couple years. I brought in an import baby that was missing scales on the top of its head. I didn't think a whole lot about it, but when I bred him, believe it or not, it was a dominant or co-dominant gene. With any luck, we'll be able to breed scaleless heads together next year and not just get the tip of its head scaleless, but the whole body. That should create some controversy. The caramel albino gene in ball pythons has always been something I've been really interested in. And then when we got them into spider and pinstripe, they were really amazing. So of course the next step was to get them into spinner. So this caramel spinner really blew me away and is getting better and better as it's getting older. I think there's a bright future for this thing when we can get it into ghost and some other mutations. Of course, this is a very small sampling of the things I'm setting back for myself to breed in the future. But hey, I had to tease you guys a little bit, right? I hope you're ready for another cool ZooMed contest giveaway. This week it's going to be a Reptifogger, which happens to be one of my favorite ZooMed products. All you have to do is go over on Facebook, like both Snake Bites TV and ZooMed, and because it's the Halloween season, I want to see a really cool costume photo of you. We're going to pick the coolest one and announce it over on Facebook. Good luck, everyone. Now it's fall, and there's lots of series and season premieres coming out. And I want to know, what's your guys' favorite TV show? What are you looking forward to watching this fall? Leave a comment below and let us know. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and really liked some of our holdbacks. I can't wait till these guys become breeders and see what some of them produce for us. If you guys want to follow all of my new animals and adventures, make sure to hit us up over on Facebook and Twitter, at Snake Bites TV. Until next time, you've been watching Snake Bites. So what is Chewy's favorite adult beverage? Well, if you guessed A, Bacardi and Diet Coke, you are correct. Buy one for him the next time you see him, uh, if you're of legal drinking age. How many of you got it? Ow! Oh, oh f You put that on my face! <laughs> you really bit my face! Get away! I didn't do you really it. bit my face! I'm way back here. I swear I didn't do anything. It bit on my face! It did bite my face. Ah, oh, f***, he could've got my eye out!